An automatic aircraft landing system is useful if weather prevents the pilot's visual reference to the runway, or in cases where there is no pilot. To establish a landing slope, a radio transmitter commands a desired glide path angle of 3 degrees above the horizontal. The aircraft has instruments in its nose to receive this guidance. The goal is to make the aircraft follow the glide path, that is, force the distance D to zero. But on the glide path, the aircraft descends too rapidly for a safe landing. The rate of descent is reduced with a flare trajectory initiated at a specified altitude. The flare path prescribes an exponential rate of descent modeled after pilot flight test data all the way to touchdown. The combination of glide and flare paths provide a simple, smooth, automated landing trajectory. However, achieving the trajectory requires more complex flight control than previously considered. As we've observed in pitch control simulations of a transport aircraft, section 1.4, the elevator affects both the short period and the fugoid modes. From the fugoid mode in particular, the use of the elevator changes both aircraft's airspeed and altitude. It follows that the change in altitude to follow the glide path will result in a change in airspeed, which will not correspond to the desired airspeed for landing, and may even be too low, resulting in stall. This leads to the need for not only a pitch attitude control system, but a simultaneous airspeed control system where the glide path air, which is effectively landing guidance, is coupled to the pitch autopilot. Thus, we have multiple control loops to tune for adequate landing performance. But this is just for glide path tracking. The transition from glide path to flare path involves not only a switch in guidance, but also a switch in the controller. And it is important that this switch occur with minimal transients due to change in flight control law. In the upcoming series on automatic landing, you will learn the underlying guidance and control for the longitudinal aircraft. The lateral direction will be covered later. You will learn glide path control and flare path control. You will learn the rationale behind each control architecture and its tuning, where the effect of zeros will play a significant role. You will learn how to switch between control systems from one trajectory segment to another. You'll learn controller development, analysis, and simulation, first in a linear setting, followed by nonlinear simulation. Overall, the lessons in this section are applicable not only to landing, but other scenarios in aircraft flight control. Support on Patreon to keep lessons like this one coming and gain exclusive access to all the codes.